Monsieur Montand, there you are. Step down here, please. I wish to speak with you.
As manager of the opera, I just wanted to thank you, monsieur. We were so fortunate that you were attending the premiere tonight. Without your assistance in caring for the victims and dealing with the ensuing chaos, the situation would have been much worse. I thank you for all you have done, Raoul. It is not every detective with the surete who is also a patron of the opera. I do hope you will continue to investigate this horrible tragedy. I am afraid we have only just begun. Let us discuss how to proceed. Yes, I'm listening, Monsieur Brie. This tragedy disturbs me a great deal. What do you mean? Only that this is the work of a madman, and he must be stopped. Who knows when he might strike again. Tell me everything you know about this. There are a lot of lunatics in Paris. I firmly believe that this is a copycat crime. What do you mean by copycat crime? Why, do you not see? This is precisely the same crime committed by the Phantom of the Opera in 1881. Someone is trying to make us think that the Phantom has returned. Are you sure you have no suspects at the Opera? I trust my staff implicitly. Our stage manager has confirmed that all employees were at their positions when the crime occurred. I have sent everyone home. I suppose you could return to the theater tomorrow should you wish to question anyone who is not here now. Tell me more about the Phantom. His name was Eric. He lived below the opera while the thing was being built. He caused a lot of havoc because he was in love with an ingenue named Christine Day. Some of his things were found at the turn of the century, so he must have died sometime between 1881 and 1900. Christine Day? Any relation to tonight's star? You mean Christine Florent? No, I do not think so. What things were found? His mask, the original score to his opera Don Juan Triumphant, and a wedding ring, supposedly the one he originally gave to Christine Day. She returned it to him before she disappeared with her lover, the Vicomte de Chonet. His name was Raoul too, by the way. Where are these artifacts now? We have kept them on display in the Opera Library for years. Please feel free to go see them. There are some other documents in the library which will give you some information on the Phantom. How were these artifacts found? Some excavation was performed in the catacombs around the turn of the century. The ruins of a strange abode were found. A skeleton was discovered within, along with the artifacts. It is believed that this was the body of Eric, but nobody has ever really proved it. Who do you suggest I speak with? Find Charles, our stage manager. He should be able to help you. Where can I find Charles? You should be able to find him in the stage left wing at his post. How do I get around the theater? Go east into the orchestra pit and then into the trap room. That should lead you backstage. Charles can direct you from there. What do you want me to do then, monsieur? I would like you to explore the theater. Talk to people you see. Find out where this madman is hiding. Good lord, man, there were people murdered tonight. And I don't think this lunatic is going to stop there. Please, I ask you, Raoul, as a friend. See what you can find out. I shall be in my office shortly. Come find me and give me a report on your progress. Then I'll give you further instruction. Good luck. Until later, Monsieur Boy. I shall see you soon, Raoul.
Yes, what is it? Are you Charles? Yes, I am Charles. Please, tell me about your job here at the theater. I am the stage manager. Since you obviously do not know what that is, I shall tell you. Quite literally, the stage manager runs the show once rehearsals have ended and the show opens. A show belongs to the director only until opening night, at which time I am in charge. Please, continue describing your job. From my command station here, I stay in constant communication with virtually everyone in the theater. I make sure the show runs smoothly and without a hitch. I follow the script as it goes and call all of the sound and lighting cues. And although it's not in my official job description, I handle certain personnel problems when they arise. What sort of personnel problems? I make sure everyone is here on time for one thing. I take care of personality clashes between stars. I make sure everyone is happy. Please tell me a little about the Opera House. The Opera House was designed by Charles Garnier and first commissioned during the reign of Emperor Napoleon III. Construction began in 1854 with demolition of the already existing buildings on the site, and it wasn't until 1861 that the first foundation stone was laid. The opera did not officially open until 1875. Go on, please. This history is fascinating. The work was halted in 1870 with the onset of the Franco-Prussian War. Napoleon III was exiled and the Commune of Paris took control of the city. The opera was taken over by the Communards as an arsenal and warehouse and military prison. A prison? Many prisoners were incarcerated and tortured deep in the catacombs below the opera. By 1872, the Communards were defeated and the new government was installed. Three years later, the Opera House was completed and staged its first performance. Very interesting. How big is this building? 
It covers nearly three acres. It is 17 stories high, seven of which are below street level. The stage itself is 175 feet wide and 85 feet deep. Electric lighting replaced the auditorium gasoliers in 1881. It is a magnificent building. Tell me more about the catacombs. The water level on the site was bad. There is a lake deep beneath the stage area. It's now basically a sewer. Ever since the commune was in control and the area was used as a prison, there seems to be a perpetual chill that no amount of modern electric lighting is able to dispel. Some folks believe the area down there to be haunted. How do I get down there? You can't. It was sealed off long ago. If there is a way down there, then it's through some secret passage we don't know about. By the way, I am Detective Raoul Montan with the Surete. What of it? Can you tell me anything about tonight's mishap? Everyone was in the appropriate positions. There was no one in the fly loft or catwalks. All the lighting is controlled from the booth. I cannot imagine how it could have happened. How was the chandelier attached? There is an alcove in the ceiling through which the chandelier's electrical wires and harness are rigged. You must go to the fly loft and traverse the catwalks above the ceiling to get there. The chandelier is periodically pulled up into the alcove for maintenance. Do you have any suspects regarding tonight's mishap? Well, I don't, but some of the ballet girls certainly do. What do you mean? The ballet girls know something? They believe it's the opera ghost, you see. One ballerina in particular is spreading rumors. Opera ghost? Do you mean the phantom of the opera? Yes, isn't it silly? They are saying it's the phantom's ghost returned to seek revenge on those who did him wrong a hundred years ago. Have you seen a man with a cape recently? No, I have not seen anyone since everyone went home an hour ago. Who is this ballerina? Can I speak with her? Her name is Julie Geary. I believe she is still here, probably in her dressing room. I have not seen her leave tonight. Some of the cast stay all hours at the theater. Where is Mademoiselle Geary's dressing room? If you go through the stage right door backstage, you will find a staircase to the dressing rooms. Who else might be here? As soon as I finish what I'm doing, I'm going home. You might find Christine Florent in her dressing room. She is so dedicated to her art that she never leaves. Goodbye for now, and thank you, sir. You're welcome. Now I can finish writing down these sound cues so I can get out of here and go home. Goodbye, sir.
Bonjour. Who are you? Bonjour. I am Raoul Monton of the Surete. I am Christine Florent. I'm glad you are here. Please sit down. Why are you glad I am here? Because I believe I am in danger. I've been afraid to mention it to anyone until tonight. What do you mean by until tonight? You have a kind face, monsieur. I sense that I can trust you. Why do you think you are in danger? It's somehow connected with the chandelier falling tonight. Can you tell me anything about the chandelier falling? Yes, I suppose I must speak up now. I've been afraid to mention anything until this... happened. I believe it is all because of me that those poor people were killed. Why do you think it is all because of you? Because the Opera Ghost has returned to seek his revenge. But why me? I do not know. The Opera Ghost? What do you know about him? Only that his name was Eric, and he was a talented composer and architect. Some say he possessed some black magic abilities, but who knows? You probably think I might be crazy, but I believe in him. He speaks to me in my dreams. Actually, it's the same dream, over and over. What makes you think he's after you? Because I received a note from him. What does the note say? That he is seeking his revenge on me for leaving him to die alone or something like that. I don't know what he means. Do you still have this note? Yes. If you want it, you can have it. It's there in my dressing gown. Have you ever heard of Christine Day? Yes, I know the story of the Phantom. No one knows what happened to Christine Day and her lover, Raoul de Chagny. Supposedly, they disappeared together. I don't blame them. I... I have heard stories that I resemble her. You are not related to her, are you? Frankly, I do not know. My grandmother was orphaned, so I'm unsure of my lineage prior to her. There is only one curious clue. And what is that clue? That she was born in Scandinavia, and that was where Christine Day was from. And to where it is speculated that she and Raoul de Chagny fled. Have you ever seen him when you're awake? Never. Only in the dream. But little Julie Geary has claimed to have seen him. She describes him just as he appears in the dream. Tell me about your dreams. There is a mysterious man, dressed formally, in a cape. He's standing in the shadows with a mist surrounding him. He beckons to me. He has a seductive quality that I cannot resist. I go to him, but his face is in shadow. What else happens in the dream? He, well, he makes love to me. At first it is passionate and pleasurable. But then, I always begin to feel trapped. And I struggle to get away. I reach up to move his face into the light, but he won't let me. What does he do then? My attempt to see him angers him, and he wraps a thin rope around my neck. He... he starts to strangle me. Just as I start to black out, I wake up. It's very frightening. I'll take a look at that note, if you don't mind. Please do. Beware. I have returned to seek my revenge against you for leaving me to die in loneliness and solitude. Not even your lover can save you this time. Adieu, Mademoiselle Florent. I must leave now. Wait, Monsieur. Do not leave me, please. I am frightened. I must continue my investigation. I see. But promise me that you will return, all right? I feel like we have known each other before. Somewhere. 
I promise to return. Merci, monsieur. I look forward to seeing you again. Adieu. Bonjour, monsieur. Have a seat while I practice. You have nice form. What is your name? Merci. I am Julie Geary. What can I do for you? Tell me a little about yourself. Well, I am a dancer with the ballet corps. I am taking acting lessons and hope to become a prima donna like Christine Florent. Do you know Christine Florent well? She's very sweet, but she tends to keep to herself, like most prima donnas. I believe that she knows more about this chandelier incident than she lets on. What do you think she knows? When I mentioned that I saw the opera ghost the other day, she turned quite pale and said not to spread such rumors. How long have you been associated with the opera? My family has been with the opera all the way back to my great-grandmother. My mother was a costume seamstress. My grandmother was in the ballet like me. My great-grandmother worked for the public sector of the opera. What are your thoughts regarding the Chandelier tragedy? I am glad you asked. It was the Opera Ghost. He has returned. I always knew he would. Why do you say that you always knew he would return? Because I have dreamt about it. I have some of the powers that my great-grandmother had, you see. Your great-grandmother? Please, enlighten me. Madame Geary worked at the opera as what today we would call an usher. She looked after the boxes. She was in charge of the Phantom's personal box. His personal box? Go on, please. It was box five. 
He had ordered the manager of the opera to never sell the box, as it was his. He would attend the opera in that box, but no one knew how he got into it. He certainly didn't go through the door. Didn't your great-grandmother see him in the box? Never. She never tried to see him. She was a little afraid of him despite his kindness. But my mother said that great-grandmother told her that Box 5 had some kind of trick in it. Tell me more about Madame Geary. To put it bluntly, she was a psychic. She communicated with the Phantom without ever seeing him or speaking to him directly. She also wrote a book about him which you can find in the Opera Library. Tell me about the book. She wrote it around the turn of the century, after the Phantom's supposed death. She became something of an authority on the man. If you haven't read it, you probably should. Communicated with him? Yes. He would leave her instructions in his box. But she almost always knew beforehand what he wanted and provided it. The ghost tipped her very well. He was good to her. Tell me about your dreams. I see him in a haze of darkness and shadows. He emerges. He has a woman with him dressed in white. But I cannot see her face. She is wearing a mask. I think I know who she might be, though. Who do you think she is? The Phantom was in love with a singer named Christine Day. It could be her. But I have a theory that it might be Christine Floran. There is some kind of connection between the two. Not only do they look alike, but they are both gifted singers. Perhaps that is why the ghost has returned here and now, because of her. How do you know it's the ghost? Because I saw him. What did he look like? He was dressed formally, but his clothes were rather old-fashioned, of the kind they wore during his day. He had on a cape and was carrying a cane. He was not wearing a mask. I only caught a glimpse of his face, for it was very dark. It looked like a skull. Where and when did you see him? It was two nights ago. I was coming out of my dressing room and I saw him on the staircase. He turned to me, then quickly ran up the stairs. I was too frightened to follow. Merci. I shall speak with you later. Adieu. Adieu, monsieur.
My dear Raoul, it is time that we settle our differences. A hundred years is a long time to hold a grudge, and the weight of it has become unbearable. Revenge is the sweetest of all music, and soon the opera house shall be ringing with it.
Ah, Monsieur Montan, tell me what you've learned. There has been another crime in the library. What do you mean? Apparently, during the chaos tonight, you had a burglary. What? In the library? Oh no, we... We were also preoccupied with the chandelier mishap that no one noticed. The artifacts are missing. No! They're priceless! But who would have wanted them? They're of no use, really, to anyone but... the Phantom. I found a note, addressed to me. Really? This is extraordinary. Hmm, let me think about this a bit. I too have a note from the Opera Ghost. I thought it was a sick joke at first, but now... Well, here it is, on the desk. Take it. I suppose I should have said something, notified the authorities. The tragedy might have been prevented. I feel terrible. You do not have my permission to perform my Don Juan triumphant. Cease the production immediately, or I shall cause thee a great deal of stress. It seems that this opera ghost of yours does exist. Oh, come now, Raoul. You've been listening to too many rumors. Falling sandbags are not rumors. What? Did you have an accident? It was no accident. Oh dear. My insurance premium is really going to go up now. Well, thank goodness you're all right. You and Charles sound alike. Well, he doesn't believe these rumors either. We're both sane, rational men. I am not sure they are rumors. What do you mean by that, Raoul? Earlier, I saw a man with a cape and a mask. My dear Raoul, I have only to quote my late friend Samuel Beckett, the playwright. All men are born mad. Some remain so. <laughs> Perhaps you should go home and rest. It seems to me we're dealing with the supernatural. Well, if one believes in that sort of thing, do you? No. I am a realist. Well, that's probably a good thing. But all of this does give me... the creeps. Well, what do you have to say about all this? Perhaps there is more to this than I thought. Do you really think this could be the work of the original Phantom of the Opera? Has Eric really returned? Yes, I think so. Well, I shall await further information before I commit to such a leap of faith. But the evidence is compelling. Well, Raoul, it sounds as if you've done an excellent job with investigating this case. It seems that all evidence points to the existence of something or someone trying to make us believe that he is the real phantom of the opera. I say we should... <coughs> what was that? Who was that? Christine's dressing room. Find out what happened.
She's dead. I saw him, monsieur. The phantom. He was wearing his mask this time. I was backstage when he came running out of the stage right stairwell. He ran up the circular staircase towards the fly loft. Hurry, he's probably still there. Raoul, Raoul, wake up. Are you all right? Monsieur de Chenet. Oh dear, oh dear. Wait, wait, he's opening his eyes. He's awake. Dieu merci, thank God. Oh Raoul, are you all right? Can you hear me? Where am I? Why, you're on the stage of the opera. You had a bad fall. What were you doing in the fly loft, Raoul? You were lucky you bounced off of a flat. My love, you could have been killed. The, the Phantom, he, he just killed Mademoiselle Florent. He killed who? Mademoiselle Florent? Who is that? The poor man is delirious. Shall we take him to the hospital? But the Phantom, he pushed me. The Phantom? You mean the Opera Ghost? You saw him? My dear Vicomte, are you sure? He's had a bad fall, Monsieur Richard. He needs to rest. Did you call me Vicomte? What do you mean? Raoul, don't tell us that you have amnesia. You are Raoul, the Vicomte de Chenet. Have you forgotten? Dear Raoul, that should help, shouldn't it? Who are you? I'm Christine. Remember Christine Day? Perhaps you should see a doctor, Raoul. Wait, can you tell me the date? Why, it's June 24. 
What is the year? The year? Why, tis eighteen eighty one. All year long. Christine Day? But you look like Christine Florent. Well, who is Christine Florent? I think you must see the doctor. Who is he? You know Monsieur Richard. He's the manager of the opera. He's one of your closest friends. Don't worry about it, old man. Rest your head. It will all come back to you in a while. But I must know about that unusual tuxedo you are wearing. Where did it come from? I have never seen that style before. Very dashing. The tuxedo? It's what I always wear to the opera. I have never seen you wear that particular tuxedo. It, it looks, I don't, I don't know, foreign or something. It, is it something they're wearing in London these days? Yeah, well, never mind. Please go now. I'll be all right. Of course. I must run out for a bit, Raoul. I shall be in my dressing room in a while. Please, come visit me. I need to speak with you. My door will be open when I'm back. Rest and don't overtax yourself. Adieu. See you soon. You take it easy, Raoul. I shall be in my office. Come see me in a bit. I have received yet another note from our friend, the Opera Ghost. Adieu for now. What has happened to me? I've gone back in time somehow. And they say I'm Raoul de Chagny. This is bizarre. I must be dreaming. I'll pinch myself. Ouch! Well, I'm awake and I'm still here. I guess all I can do is work this thing out. Maybe catching the Phantom is the key. All right. I'll go along with this, whatever it is. Look out, Eric, Monsieur Phantom of the Opera. I've got your number.
Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. Whom might I be addressing? I am Jacques, and I know who you are, monsieur. It is a pleasure to meet the Vicomte de Chanet. What do you do here at the opera, monsieur? I am the prompter. I stick my head through the hole up here in the ceiling and prompt the actors if they forget something. Wonderful job, but it was a bit hard on the feet, uh, until they installed that little seat. At my insistence, I might add, I used to have to stand for the duration of the entire opera. You are not the opera ghost, I take it. <laughs> no, mon dieu, lord no. I don't look a bit like him. Have you ever seen the Opera Ghost? We, oui, I have indeed. I was in the fly loft, helping with rigging some scenery. I was holding onto a purchase line when I looked up and saw him. He was standing on the catwalk, watching me closely. What did he look like? He was tall and, and was wearing dark, formal attire. He had a long cape. I could not see his face, for he was wearing a mask. He didn't react at all when I looked at him, he just stood staring at me. Why does he wear a mask, I wonder? Why, to cover the hideousness of his deformity. It is said that no man can look upon his features and not be repulsed. What happened after he stood staring at you? We had a face-off for several minutes. I was too terrified to move. Then, after a while, he simply pulled his cape around himself and vanished into thin air. I almost dropped the line I was holding. I have not been to the fly loft since. What can you tell me about the opera ghost? Only what I have heard from other people. His real name is Eric, and he's as much flesh and blood as you or I. He lives beneath the opera, deep within the catacombs. I know, for I have been down there. Do you know anything about his past? He was born disfigured. The first gift his mother gave to him was a mask. Despite his handicap, he grew up exceptionally intelligent and talented. What were his talents? Music, first and foremost. He studied music as a child, and then later he studied architecture. I have not told anyone else this, but... Well, I knew him as a child. This is how I know. Alor, you knew him? Tell me more! Yes, I was in one of his first school classes. And I was one of the boys who taunted him. It's why I'm so afraid of him now. When I saw him on the catwalk, I felt he was considering some sort of revenge. Where did he study architecture? He taught himself. He was not a social person, and he only went to school in his early years. He was tormented by the other children much too often. He quickly learned he was not wanted. What brought him to live in the catacombs? He practiced his architectural knowledge in Persia, building palaces for the rulers there. He was especially adept at secret passages and trap doors. He also developed a knack for magic and illusion. Somehow, he came to the attention of Charles Garnier, the opera architect. And Garnier hired him? Yes. He worked in private, so as not to frighten the other workers. When the communards were in control, I speculate that Eric executed his plans for an abode in the catacombs. There he has hidden himself from humanity. How do I find the catacombs? They've been sealed off. There was once an entrance from the cellar, but it was too drafty. Now there is no entrance, except perhaps through the sewage system. There must be a secret entrance somewhere in the theater. It's the only way the Phantom could enter. Sometimes I hear his music through the walls. His music? Yes. He has a pipe organ in his abode, and some nights it can be heard faintly echoing through the catacombs. Much of what he plays is original, but I think his favorite piece of music is Bach's Toccata and Fugue in D minor. I hear that one often. Thank you for your time, monsieur. Adieu. 
Adieu, mon jeu. Bonjour. Who are you? My name is Edgar Degas. I am an artist. What do you paint? Ballerinas. Young, female ballerinas. Lithe, supple, young, female ballerinas. You enjoy painting young females, monsieur? Don't you? I have not seen any ballerinas around. Oh, they're here, all right. One must only know where to look. Are you lost? Well, can you direct me to the ballet studio? I'm working on what will undoubtedly be considered a masterpiece after I am dead. I'm not sure where it is. Oh. Well, I'll just wander until I find it. How do you know you'll be respected after your death? Ah, it is the way it always works, monsieur. Artists of my day are never appreciated until after their death. You should know, monsieur. You have seen the future. The future? How do you know that? What do you mean? Monsieur, the mysteries of the universe are not ours to explain. We must merely experience them and benefit from what they teach us. Adieu. Adieu. Feeling better, I hope. You look much better. You were very lucky, my friend. But let's get down to business. I have some things to tell you about our ghostly friend. Tell me about Christine Day. What do you mean? Aren't you two, well, haven't you two been seeing each other? We have? Well, it seems to be the talk of the theater. Are you sure you don't need a doctor? <laughs> you cannot fool me, Raoul. I saw how you looked at her when you awoke. Typical Parisian, you. <laughs> Be nonchalant and matter-of-fact about it, eh? Well, what do you want to know about her? Is she really a good singer? Yes, she is. 
I am not sure if she could sustain a leading role. She is still young and undisciplined. But she has gotten better and better just over the last few weeks. It is as if she acquired an outstanding teacher. She improved leaps and bounds in, really, a, a few days. A teacher? What do you mean? Practically daily she comes in with some new technique, or it seems she has learned more about emotion, or her voice seems much stronger. It's a number of things. Things only a trained musician could hear in her voice. Someone is teaching her, there is no doubt. Will she sing the lead in The Wedding of Isabel? Yes, I have agreed to it. Besides, Carlotta has mysteriously gained a throat ailment. Otherwise, she would have thrown a fit. What is her job here? She was placed immediately into the chorus. She has had two minor parts since then. She has never sung the lead. Where does she come from? I knew her father before he died. He was a brilliant violinist with the orchestra. They emigrated here from Scandinavia, I believe. After her mother died, she was studying ballet when one of the directors heard her sing. Please update me on the Phantom's actions. I have a new note from him. It is the same handwriting as the previous note. What does the old note say? I told you about it last week. My head bump on your head has really affected you. The ghost wants us to pay him a monthly salary and reserve one of the best boxes for him for every performance. The nerve! Here, read it yourself. It's in the tray. My payment of 20,000 francs shall be due the first of every month. Please give it to Madame Geary for placement in box 5, which shall remain unsold for every performance. Failure to comply with this request shall result in great misfortune. Which box does he reserve? Box 5? It's one of the best ones, too. We could sell it every night if we wanted. We never know when he will use it, so none of us have ever seen him. Madame Geary may have had some communication with him, though. Tell me about Madame Geary. She looks after the boxes. She is the one who finds the notes the ghost leaves for us, usually in box five. It is about time for her to report to work, so you may find her cleaning the boxes now. Odd woman, I might add, but she does her job. Can I see box five? If it's not locked, you'll find it through the loge corridor. We have examined it thoroughly, I assure you. If the Phantom does go there, it is by prestidig... 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 By magic! What does the new note say? He wants Christine Day to sing the lead at the wedding of Isabel tonight, not Carlotta the star. Here's the note on top of the desk. Miss Christine Day shall sing the lead in the wedding of Isabel, not that toad, Carlotta. Please honor this request, or the tragedy that follows will be on your hands. Thank you, monsieur. I shall see you later. Adieu, Raoul. You take it easy now, oui? Who might I be addressing? I am Mame Gary. I am caretaker of the boxes. I understand you have dealings with the Opera Ghost. Uh, yes, that is correct. Mind you, I have never actually seen him. 
He communicates to me by written messages which he leaves in his box. Surely you have seen some evidence of him? Once I peeked into the box during a performance. I saw the silhouette of a man sitting there. I was frightened because I expected the box to be empty. I quickly closed the door. After a minute or two I gathered the courage to look again. And he was gone. What kind of written messages? He has left messages to the manager requesting this or that. He once left me a nice note of thanks for looking after his interests. Does he tip you? He tips me very well. Better than most of the gentlemen who pay for boxes. Then you have a monetary interest in protecting him. Monsieur, I resent your inference. I am a working-class woman trying to make a paltry living. I would naturally do my best for any patron who tips that well. The ghost has been kind to me, it is true, but I do not protect him. He can protect himself. Tell me about the Opera Ghost's personal box. Box 5 is the ghost's personal box. He has used it ever since he first began haunting the opera. When did he first begin haunting the opera? It was really since it opened in 1875. I started working here in 1879. He has always been here to my knowledge. I heard tales that he was around during construction of the opera and even during the time of the Commonards. Tell me more about his work in the construction. He used the time and space to build his own domain deep below the theater. I believe he may have protected his lair with puzzles and traps. Do you know the key to these puzzles? I believe the key lies in the fact that the opera ghost is very vain. He thinks much of himself. The answers may be something very personal to the Phantom. What kind of traps? He gained much knowledge of diabolical traps and puzzles while he lived in Persia. I have heard tales of a puzzle with toggle switches which correspond with the 26 letters of our alphabet. I know nothing more. What is so special about Box 5? It offers a first-class view of the stage. The boxes in this area are among the best seats in the house. How do you think he gets into the box? He's a ghost. How should I know? Madame Giri, you know he is not really a ghost. I sense that you are a good man. No, he is not a ghost any more than you or I. But he has powers. Powers which I do not totally understand. He is quite intelligent, this Eric. He is one with the structure of this building. If you wish to find him, look to the structure itself. Madame Giri, I believe you are hiding something. And I believe you are hiding something, Monsieur. I believe you are not what you seem. What do you mean by, I'm not what I seem? Monsieur, you are from another time and place. You do not know how you got here, and neither do I. But destiny is leading you to a dangerous cataclysm. I believe you have good intentions, but I must warn you that your adversary is quite cunning. Tell me more about what you see. Your soul is under the control of forces beyond our understanding. You will return to your own time and place when the unfolding play is completely enacted. And what is it that must be enacted? I do not know, Monsieur. I do not know. There are some items that will help you, and perhaps I can help. What are these items? Look for three items from your own time. How can you help me? I can unlock Box 5 for you, but I cannot do that until you have more control over your destiny. Find the items and I will unlock the box. Adieu, Madame Geary. Adieu, Monsieur. Oh my, why did I not see before? 
You already have the items from your own time. My apologies, monsieur. You are one step ahead of me. Stay that way, and you will be one step ahead of him as well. I shall unlock box five for you now. My dear Vicomte, leave Miss Day alone or you will suffer a great malady.
Bonjour, Christine. No, I just returned from my errands. What good timing you have. Why don't you sit down, mon ami? Where have you been? I went to my father's grave. You know, I visit it every day. He was such an inspiration to me. It was he who sent the Angel of Music to me. Tell me more about the Angel of Music. He comes to me when I practice. He's my teacher. I would certainly not be able to sing the lead tonight without his help. What does he look like? I have never seen him. I only hear him. He sings and speaks to me here in this room. His voice seems to come from the walls themselves. When do you expect him again? Soon. In a few minutes. I must ask you to leave in a moment. He will not come if someone else is here with me. You must understand, Raoul. But who is he? I don't expect you to believe me, Raoul, but he really is an angel. My father always told me that if he should die, he would send an angel to continue my musical instruction. He kept his word. Christine, how long have you known me? Why, Raoul? We knew each other as children, you know that. We met again just last year here at the opera. You've been so kind to me and so supportive of my career. I shall always be grateful to you. Remind me of our exploits as children. Don't you remember? You jumped into the ocean to retrieve a scarf I had dropped. The wind had carried it into the sea. You ran into the water with your clothes on. I was with my father. You remember him, don't you? Tell me about your father. He was a brilliant violinist. He taught me so much about music. He told the most wonderful stories. You used to listen to him, too. I miss him terribly. How is your career going? Have you heard? Carlotta has a sore throat and will not be going on tonight. I will be singing the lead in the opera. This is my big chance. Soon it will be time for me to practice. Have you had any strange dreams lately? Why, what do you mean? Any dreams about men wearing masks? How... How did you know? Yes, I have frightening dreams. Tell me about your dreams. There is a man with a mask. He sings to me, much like the angel of music. I'm riding a white horse, and he is leading the horse. We go to a dark place, and there, well, we make love. All the while, I hear the angel of music playing the violin. Sounds romantic. Why, Raoul, you sound jealous. It's just a dream, after all. Do you ever unmask him? I'm too frightened to do so. And the strange thing is, that even though I am frightened, there is something comforting about the man. Come here, my love. Hold me a moment. Are you sure you're all right? Why, I was never better. I love you, Raoul. Do not forget. We shall see what happens after the opera if I'm accepted as a lead. My career could soar. And I would lose you forever? Nonsense. Don't worry about that. Shouldn't I stay with you during your practice? No. No one can be here then. Now it is about time, so I must ask you to leave. Oh, the Angel of Music is here. I must practice now. Adieu, Ro. You must leave now. I hear it. Where is that violin coming from? Please, go now. I cannot speak anymore, please.
in her music. Is that you? Are you here? Yes, Christine. I am here now. Come to me, my love. Yes, Angel. I am coming. Take me. I am ready. Take me. Come to me, Christine. You will love me always. You are mine forever. Christine. Open the door, Christine! Christine, you shall be mine forever and ever. I must get inside. Where could she be? Doesn't she know she must go on in less than 15 minutes? What could have happened to her? This could be the work of the Opera Ghost. Do you really think so? What could he have done with her? Christine, you have returned! Are you all right? Of course, Monsieur Richard. Bonjour, Raoul. Where have you been? We have all been so worried. The performance is set to begin in ten minutes. I would never let you down, monsieur. I am a professional. Raoul, I have left for you a complimentary box seat ticket at the box office. Please pick it up. I must run to my dressing room now. Adieu. Well, I'll be. Why, I'm astounded. I must say it's a good thing we repaired her dressing room door quickly. Did you have to break the door and the axe, Raoul? Christine's return is a relief, I must say. I should say so. Well, you better pick up your ticket, and I will see you later. Adieu. May I help you, monsieur? What are you selling? Tickets to tonight's opera. Would you like a box seat, an orchestra seat, a mezzanine seat, or our economy seat? Nothing. Never mind. Fine. Adieu. May I help you, monsieur? Do you have a ticket for Raoul de Chagny? Oui, monsieur. Here it is. Miss Day left it just a few moments ago. I am in danger. Please meet me backstage after the performance tonight. Thank you.
Excuse me, monsieur. Do you have a ticket? Yes. Very good, monsieur. Box 9. I shall unlock the door. Enjoy the performance, monsieur. Well, the house has been cleared, the scenery has been struck, we can investigate this more thoroughly without a panic-stricken audience on our hands. They obviously went through the trap door. Yes, it was no magic trick. I wonder what Jacques has to say. Why, I have not seen Jacques. Perhaps you should seek him out. Has backstage been thoroughly searched? Only perfunctorily. The stage manager sent everyone home. You might want to take a look yourself. What should I do now, Monsieur Richard? I fear for Christine's life. That monster is capable of anything. We must find her. I shall go deal with the police at the station. Search for her, Raoul. She loves you. See what you can find backstage. Good luck, Raoul. Adieu.
It is I, Raoul. Oh, Raoul, it is more help me. That monster may return at any moment. The door is locked. Where is the key? Raoul, don't leave me here, please. The lock is somehow activated musically. Christine? My lord, Christine, what is this? Some kind of coffin? I'll find a way to get you out. Don't worry, darling.
what has happened to you? What has he done? It is all clear to me now. The angel of music was Eric, the opera ghost. He spoke to me through my dressing room mirror. Earlier today, he, he must have somehow put me in a trance. I followed him through the mirror to this place. But I examined that mirror carefully. I did too, but it does open, and only he can do it. There's a secret passage from my dressing room down to the catacombs. He assured me that no one can open it but him. How did he put you in a trance? It was with music. His voice? A violin? I was convinced he was the angel of music sent by my father. He has powers of suggestion that are impossible to resist. What happened after you followed him here? He placed me on a boat and he rode here. At first, he was unusually kind, almost vulnerable. He played some of his opera for me. He professed his love for me. No. And then what? He gave me this ring. He declared that I was now his bride. Here, you take it. I don't want it. It was shortly after this that I was able to unmask him. What did he look like? He is death personified. The poor wretched creature has the face of a corpse. It, it is horrible. How did you unmask him? He was playing the organ. I slowly crept behind him and grabbed it. It made him furious. I thought he was going to kill me. But he didn't hurt you? No. He became like a pathetic little child. He cried that now I would never love him. So I tricked him. How did you trick him? I told him I would love him because he was so kind to have taught me his music. It was because of him that I am singing the lead in the opera. I begged him to let me return to perform in my leading debut. I promised to return here after the performance. But apparently it didn't work. Eric must have known you and I were going to meet after the opera, so he abducted me from the stage. Where is the Phantom now? He said he was going to get us some food. He should be back any minute. We must make haste. If he finds you here, he will surely kill you. No time to talk, love. Let's run. You are right. Make haste. I shall follow you. Stand back, foul beast, or I shall cause you great harm. Ha! I shall enjoy watching you try. to have vanished. All the better for us. Quickly, let us run! Take the score from the organ. It may be useful.
Now we'll both die! Raoul? Monsieur Montpont! Oh, look! Monsieur Brie, his eyes are opening! Dear Merci, thank goodness. Raoul, are you all right? What year is this? What year? This is worse than I thought. Why, it's 1993, just as it was when you fell from the catwalk. Who are you? Why, I am Christine Florent. We met earlier, don't you remember? You poor man. Perhaps we should call the doctor. Where am I? You are in the Opera Library. You've had a bad fall, Monsieur Monton. Go away and let me sleep. We will. But first, we must make sure you are all right. Christine Florent? I thought you were dead. What? No, monsieur, my body is quite warm and alive. I'm afraid you really must see the doctor. But you were strangled by the Phantom. The Phantom? My dear boy, you are delirious. I realize that many of my boyfriends don't come around much anymore, but I wouldn't call any of them Phantoms. You must be Christine Day reincarnated. Or something. Christine Day? Wasn't she? She was the Phantom of the Opera's Object of Desire. A singer with the opera. A hundred years ago. You must rest, Raoul. Why don't I go and fetch the doctor? Please do, Christine. Take care. I'll be back. I didn't fall from the catwalk. The Phantom pushed me. The Phantom, eh? My dear boy, we haven't had a Phantom here in over a hundred years. I think your reading that book has put too many images in your head. You haven't had any notes from the Phantom? Notes? No, I have no notes from any Phantom. You are imagining things, Raoul. Why don't you rest until the doctor comes? But he was here! I have his mask and... Wait! Where are they? My dear Raoul, you are mistaken. Those items have been locked in that glass case for a century. Look! Well, who caused the chandelier tragedy? What chandelier tragedy? The chandelier fell on the audience earlier tonight. <laughs> My dear boy, that bump on the head really has done a number on you. The chandelier is hanging from the ceiling, where it has always hung, for a hundred years. Go away and leave me alone. Very well, you rest. Christine will be back with the doctor soon.
Thank you.